the two houses that I have on the contract now is a probate in California and it's a a five three three thousand something square foot house in Houston, Texas. So I'm trying to find a buyer for that right now. Um, but both of those are gonna be some pretty pretty good profits on the end of that. Ten to fifteen thousand. You know, five hundred thousand dollars in assignments. Hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Uh, so how long have you been a, a member with us? Um, I think I've been using Deal Machine for um, maybe like the ending of last year. So like around October of last year, I believe. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's and been a while. Have you been, how long, uh, so tell me about your like real estate journey. Uh, when, how long have you been doing real estate investing? Um, so I started real estate, well, yeah, I started real estate investing on last last year March, and okay. but I've I've known about wholesaling since like 2020, but because at first it seemed like, like you know when you're just scrolling on social media and you see all these different ads about things like when you're on YouTube, I think the first video I saw was something from um, Cody Sperber, and he was saying how you know you can buy it like buy a house and with no, like not using any, any of your own money. So at first it came off like, a, like, you know, it just ain't like a scam or something like that. So once I got tired of constantly seeing the videos, I decided to do some research on my own. And I was like, wait, <laughs> you may be on to something here. And um, I spent like a year, the majority of 2020, just, you know, being stuck inside. I spent that whole year doing research, watching videos from different people. And then I decided to pull the trigger with, um with getting his course and actually learning what it's what it was all about. And I started calling people um, around March of uh, like 2021. So spent a whole year researching and then the beginning of 21, that's when I actually like, you know, started doing everything that I was learning about. And what what market are you in? Um, so I live here in Miami, Florida. So I'm down here in Florida. Um, I went to school in Ohio. So I was also in that market as well. And now I'm virtually trying to get into Texas, Cali, and New York. Oh, dang. Wait, where did you go to yeah. college in Ohio? Um, I went to a school called Capital University. It was uh, in um, Bexley, Bexley, Ohio, a small, rich town. <laughs> Is it, is it on the, I went to, I went to Kent state. So where are you in Ohio? Uh, in like right 10 minutes from Ohio state, literally like. Oh, okay. Okay. State. All right. <laughs> nice. Well, you're in a way better, uh, uh, weather place than oh, Ohio yeah, now. Sure. Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> nothing will ever beat Miami, but I leaving high school, graduating from high school, I definitely wanted to get away from home. Yeah, I, I never wanted That's to stay totally, home school. That's totally, totally like understandable. <laughs> um, so tell me about this deal that you did with us. Could you kind of take us through, like, start to finish, like how it kind of came about, you know, how many leads um, you added to get to this? So by the time, so the lead that we finally closed on in March, of, it's funny because it took, I think we closed on that on we closed on that deal in March of what, what would have been like my anniversary of starting wholesaling. Uh, so that was pretty fun. But that deal, I first found that deal back in October around the time that I first started using Deal Machine. I found it on a, um, on a website, a for sale by owner website. And when I was looking into it, it seemed like the guy who was selling, he wasn't giving any room for the numbers to make sense. So, you know, I left the deal alone. But in January, I started working with um another wholesaler and we became like really good partners. He ended up finding a deal again. And once he told me, you know, hey, I think I got something. I'm running the numbers. I'm looking at the address. And I'm like, all of this seemed very familiar. And once I actually drove out to the property, I was like, I've spoken to both of you guys. Like, because it, it was a father and, and a son. But in my head, I'm like, I spoke to both of you guys before. But I'm just going to pretend like this is my first time meeting you. So that deal came <laughs> back around. It ended up being a fourplex down in Miami. Um, the deal started out very smooth. It got really rocky um, later on in the process because the seller, he didn't let me, he didn't let us know. Like there were a bunch of uh, code violations on the building. 
So the deal literally uh, almost fell apart, but because we had a very patient buyer and he understood that we had no knowledge of it, we didn't find all of this out until we did the, the title search. And um, at that point, the, the seller, we had already, you know, got our, got our assignment contract signed, got the, um, the A and B contract signed, and all of these code violations started popping up. So I'm, I'm, uh, I automatically started to think like, oh man, like this buyer is going to back out because this is information that we failed as wholesalers to let him know. And I know that sometimes they don't like to deal with the unforeseen. Like if something pops up, they're going to, you know, some, not all, but some will, you know, just drop the deal right there and wash their hands with it. But like I said, he was really patient and the seller was just making it difficult because the seller was like, well, um, your guy, you guys are buying as is, and that's as is like, he wasn't trying to give us any leeway of like, you know, my bad, I forgot to mention this, or, you know, is there something we can work out? He was just like, nope, we want what we want. You already signed the contract. It's as is and whatnot. So that just created a lot of, uh, back and forth between us, the title company and the, the buyer because of the current situation. But, um, to resolve it, we end up having to take less than, we had to end up taking like a, a $10,000 cut from our assignment fee just to give back to the buyer so the buyer would be able to pay um, pay those code violations off at closing and be able to, you know, wrap this thing up, which is okay with me because that deal ended up being our my very first one. So I was just like, hey, you know, eight two thousand or eight thousand as long as i can mark this down and say that this is a closed deal that i did you know with my partner i'm cool and it was it was it was really fun like once we closed it and i went to go pick up the check i was like man this is like all right this is this is serious like this is for real i'm one of the guys that i watch on youtube all the time now like i got my money i'm ready for my next one I, that is well, one congratulations because I agree. Like some people think they they go, oh, I only got, and I'm like, no, no, like that's more than what you had before, and Definitely you closed was. a deal. Mm -hmm. Like you did the work, and that's just putting you one step closer to what more you want to do and how you're going to learn. And I love that you said that. That this is like this was a learning experience. You got the deal For done, sure. and now it's like. Yes. Let's go. And it took a while, but um, just recently I have two, two, two more houses on the contract. Um, I ha should have been three, but I actually got beat out by somebody else for a house down here in Miami um, that I sent out postcards to back in January. And then the owner reached out to me at this point, like a month ago, uh, just randomly. And, but I ended up getting beat out. But the two houses that I have on the contract now is a probate in California and it's a a five three three thousand something square foot house in Houston, Texas. So I'm trying to find a buyer for that right now. Um, but both of those are going to be some pretty pretty good profits on the end of that. Holy crap! So how are you? <laughs> um, so are you using Deal Machine for driving for dollars or list pulling or for the or just um, for the mail marketing? Or all of the above? <laughs> Both. Oh, well, all, well, all three, yeah. Um, I drive, so how I use the driving for dollars is I don't set up, like, you know, set it up and then start driving. It's more so, like, if I'm just on my everyday commute and I see, like, a house, I'm, I don't know. I have, I, got, I have a real good sense of direction. So, like, I'll pull up the deal, uh, the deal, the driving for dollars part of the app. And I'm already past the house, but I know, like, okay, this was, like, two blocks ago. Let me just zoom out on the app and then zoom in. And I click, like, click the houses that I knew what side it was on until, like, I see the first numbers of the address again on the app. And I'll just save it. And then I'll do, like, all of my research on it later. Um, I do love Deal Machine for the fact of um, sending out mail. I don't think any other platform that I've used before Deal Machine, I've been able to, like, send out mail properly and keep track of it. So that's that's very clutch is um to use for the app and um keeping track of the properties and the skip tracing. I feel like you guys have like the best skip tracing uh when it comes to accuracy with numbers that are valid and the ones that are not. That's I'm that really part. glad <laughs> I I personally love the me too because you know before um and you you 
got in at a great time because we switched data providers and it was like great. And, and we started doing mm. like the, um, the scrubbing of like, is it connected or not? And it saves so much time because yeah. it's like, it oh, does. thank God, I don't have to call this number and waste my time. <laughs> right. It really, really does. Because I've used the platform before where it's like, I'll skip trace a, a person's um, phone numbers and get back. Like all of the numbers that I get back are disconnected. And it's like, I can't get the, you know, the money back. You know, it don't cost that much. But when I do like a, a good batch of numbers, I just lost out on, you know, five, ten dollars and no, none of these numbers work and there was nothing I can do about it. So I purposely use Deal Machine just for that. Like even if so, I, I use a combination of platforms, but Deal Machine is probably like my my primary when it comes to skip tracing. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, good. We're happy to hear it. Yeah. I'm so happy that like you're enjoying it. And also like uh the I have to ask you um your mail strategy. So what is do you send out an X amount number of them? Do you use a certain mail sequence or do you just like mm -hmm. forever let it run? Yeah, I think I think forever and let it run because um I think how how I handle the mail is when I find like a new address and it's a vacant, I save it. Um, I skip trace and then I send out mail immediately, even if I haven't texted or called the, the lead yet. I just want to get that mail out because even if they don't answer, like if I do call a text and they don't answer me, at some point they're going to see this mail and maybe they'll reach back out. Maybe they won't, but I'll send like maybe two sequence of mail pieces. Well, I think it's four, right? Yeah. Send out four of those and your, just follow yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, fo and follow up from there. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. And I like would love to connect again when uh, you close these other two. That'd be so yes. great to connect and like do another video. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I'm sorry this one was kind of cut short, but I'm glad that we got to connect. Oh, good. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.